If you ever wanted to learn how to create amazing high converting thumbnails like this one, this one, or even this one, then you came to the right place because in this video, I'm going to show you how to create amazing YouTube thumbnails in Photoshop in just under 10 minutes. So hope this is going to be valuable for you. My name is Vince and let's get right into it. So once you open up Photoshop, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a new file, right? A new document. So click here. And then after that, we want to set the uh, resolution of it. So for width, we are going to use 1920 by 1080. YouTube actually uh, will lower it down a little bit more. Uh, they compress it to 720p thumbnails, but I still prefer making it in full HD. It's not gonna make a big difference in terms of storage or anything like that. Then you want to click on create and now you have opened up your new document, right? So after this, the first thing I like to do is I will always unlock the background layer. So I just double click on that and then click OK. And now instead of it being locked, it's just a regular layer, right? After this, I am going to first of all import uh, the thumbnail face picture that I took of myself. As you can see, I look like a highly intelligent person on this picture. Uh, I personally like to kind of like batch shoot a bunch of thumbnails. So basically I will put my camera down, make a bunch of different like crazy faces, uh, take a bunch of photos and then I will use those photos for thumbnails in the future uh, because this way I don't have to always like recreate a new thumbnail from the ground up uh, and you know I don't have to spend as much time on it every single time I want to create a new thumbnail. So. That's how I like to do it. Anyways, with camera raw, I'm just going to up uh, lift the highlights a little bit. I will maybe even lift the shadows a little bit. Just add a little bit more contrast, uh, add a little bit more exposure, just to make sure you know everything is clear. Actually, I will bring down the highlights a bit more. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK. And now I will basically uh, place this image here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to cut out myself from the background so I can change the background to whatever I want to. Now, my way of doing it is I will first come here to the quick selection tool. And then here I like to click on select subject. And then in this drop down menu, I will click on cloud. So I will click on select subject and now it should do an okay job of detecting me on the image and selecting me on it. You can see it did all right not a perfect selection. You can see it included some of the chair, but to be fair though, uh, it is kind of hard for it to notice where uh, the background begins and where I end because it's a pretty dark image. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Q on my keyboard and then it's going to bring up this thing where basically everything that is not included in my selection is red and everything that is included is uh, not red, it's colored, right? So the way I can uh, include or exclude things from my selection now is by going down here to the brush tool. And basically now whenever I'm uh, brushing over with white, it's going to include that in the selection. And whenever I'm brushing over with uh, black, it's going to exclude it from the selection. So uh, I'm just going to paint over these parts that I don't want to have in my selection. And you can switch between your primary and secondary color, which in this case is black and white with just pressing X on your keyboard. So hope that helps you. I like to zoom in, uh, make my brush a little bit smaller and be pretty precise with it. Uh, I will bring up the flow and the opacity both to maximum. And you can see I can create a nice and detailed selection uh, with this method. In terms of zooming in and out on your uh, document, uh, there are a couple different ways to do it. I personally just like using my touchpad on my laptop, but you can also use command or control if you are on Windows and the plus and minus keys on your uh, keyboard. So yeah, I'm gonna zoom in, you know, make sure uh, it's nice. Obviously, you don't have to be perfect with your selection because at the end of the day, this is just a YouTube thumbnail and it's not going to be visible if you have small imperfections, but just make sure like overall it looks, uh, you know, nice and clean. I'm probably gonna include these parts as well here. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this now. So I'm going to press Q on my keyboard again. And now I am just going to uh, press Command C, Command V. And as you can see, I have created with this a new layer of just my selection. So if I want to, I can go and click here on this background layer and just straight up delete it. And now I am cut out from the background. Uh, and I'm going to now position myself a little bit. So I will 
probably make it a bit bigger, uh, put it here on the right side. So I am quite happy with how that looks right now. Next up, I'm going to change the background of this image. Funny enough, I'm actually creating a thumbnail for this video. So I uh, hope you guys see I practice what I preach and teach, right? So uh, I'm going to click here on create new layer and then I'm going to place that layer under this layer one that is basically of me. And I am going to drag and drop this screenshot of Photoshop right here that I have um, you know, created just a few minutes ago because I want that to be the background instead. Now, with my background, I like to make it pretty nice on the eye. So I am going to, for example, get rid of this uh, space. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to get rid of this black cube here or, um, you know, black square. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come here to my brush tool. I'm going to press Option or Alt if you are on Windows and use the eyedropper tool to select this exact kind of gray. I'm going to click on it and I will paint over this part so it's, you know, nice and one color in the background. It's not distracting. All right. Next up, I'm going to select again this background. I will actually rename it so uh, you guys can clearly see. So I will rename that layer background. I will uh, name this layer on top of Vince's face. On the background, I am going to apply what is called a Gaussian blur effect to it. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to the top where it says filter, and then I will scroll down to blur, Gaussian blur. And I, now I can adjust the amount of the blur right here if I want to. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. After that, I'm going to click OK. And now I am going to make some slight adjustments to uh, how dark the background is. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the background, come here to adjustments, and I will apply a curves adjustment layer to it. And with this, I'm going to bring down the shadows a little bit so it's a bit darker. Now, next up, I'm going to select my face and I will apply an adjustment layer to that as well. But here I'm going to raise the highlights a little bit so it, it makes my uh, face a little bit brighter. And with this one, with this layer, I don't want it to actually affect the background. So what you can do if you only want an adjustment layer to adjust uh, a certain specific layer is make sure your adjustment layer is on top of what you are trying to affect, which in my case is, you know, Vince's face layer. And then I'm going to right click on this adjustment layer and then come down here to create clipping mask. And now, as you can see, it has been linked to this uh, layer under it. So it's actually only affecting my face. Uh, this is how I personally like to do this process. I am also going to add a slight vignette to the background because uh, I quite like that look on thumbnails. And the way I'm going to do that is, well, there are two ways you can go about it. First of all, you can go up here to the top to where it says filter, and then you can come here to the camera raw uh, filter, and you could go ahead and add some um, you can go ahead and add some vignetting to it here, just like this. So that could work. But what I personally prefer doing actually is I just like to add a new layer. I will uh, make my brush really big. So something like 500 pixels. I will bring the hardness of it down a lot and I will bring down the opacity as well. And I will just paint over the edges with this. So this way I can fully control kind of like how my uh, vignette looks and I can you can see I can make the edges a bit darker if I want to. Um, I will actually make it a darker color so it pops out more. And uh, yeah, this is how I, I can create a vignette pretty easily. If I want to make it less harsh, I can just bring down the opacity of it uh, as much as I want to, right? So I am quite happy with how this looks now. After this, the next step is I'm going to add some text to it, right? So I'm going to go to the top and add a new layer right here. And I'm going to come to my type tool, my text tool, right? And here I will click wherever I want to add the text. And I will make this probably like um, amazing. Let me, what should I make it like thumbnails in 10 minutes? All right, next up, I'm going to select the whole thing and I will make the text white. Okay. 
and I will probably change it to a different font. I quite like uh, this font that actually Mr. Beast uses in a lot of his thumbnails, which is the Obelix Pro font. Uh, this you know pops really well and usually performs really well on YouTube thumbnails, but you can select whatever kind of font you want to use. And if you come here to properties, you are able to adjust the size of the, of the text. You are able to adjust the space between the two lines. Uh, which I'm going to do here, right? You are able to also adjust um, the space between the characters, the the color of it, the paragraph settings. So yeah, I'm going to do it just like this. And I will now come to my uh, move tool. I will press command T. You can also press control T if you're on Windows. And I will make this text uh, a little bit bigger and I will kind of like resize it however I want to, just like, that kind of okay next up i'm going to add a nice little drop shadow to my text or something like an outline so to do that i'm going to click here right click on my text layer come to blending options and here you are able to add all sort of different effects to your text in this case i just want to add a nice little drop shadow so i will do that i will make the distance a bit smaller just so it's you know easier to read uh, and maybe i will add a little bit of an outer glow as well Maybe we could make it red since it's about YouTube thumbnails and um, that should do. But, you know, you can do a bunch of different cool uh, options and things here. So I'm quite happy with this, you know, uh, text right now. The next thing I'm going to do is I will bring up uh, the brightness of my face a little bit more just to make it even more contrasty. And now... I am going to add uh, some logos um, to my picture. So I first of all downloaded the, this uh, pretty cool like Photoshop logo. So I'm going to drag and drop that here and I'm going to place that right here. Okay, just like so. And I'm going to add a little outer glow to it so it pops out more from the, from the background. So I'm going to again right click, come to blending options, outer glow, and maybe I will make the outer glow white, um, just kind of like that. Maybe make the spread a bit smaller and the size bigger, all right? I'm going to actually remove this uh, red outer glow from this text, I'm not a huge fan of that. And you know, you can always tweak and adjust things however you like to. And I also want to add the YouTube logo here. So to do that, I'm going to come here to Google YouTube uh, logo PNG, all right? And if you go to images, you will find a bunch of them. So I'm just going to download this one, for example. Uh, just right click here, save image. All right. And now I'm going to come back to Photoshop, drag and drop this here. And I will apply the same kind of uh, outer glow to this as well. So right click blending options, outer glow. Maybe I will make it a little bit, little bit smaller. Um, just like that. All right. So I am quite happy with how that looks. Another thing you can do if you want to add to your thumbnails just to make them a little bit more extra is add some texture maybe to the background. So to do that, I'm going to come here uh, down and my layers to this background layer. So basically I want it to only be under my face and all the text. If you search up something like Photoshop texture overlays, you are going to be able to find a bunch of different ones. Let's just use this one, for example. You want to make sure to use something that's, you know, copyright free. I'm not sure if this is, but hey, we're just going to risk it and use that. So I will download that and I will drag and drop that right here. Now you might notice this looks kind of weird, right? So what you want to do with stuff like overlays is you want to come here to the blending mode and here where it says normal. You want to change that to a different one and you can see all these different blending options or blending modes affect your footage differently but with blending options or blending modes you are going to be able to create nice composites uh, because it will blend the two uh, layers kind of together so i quite like how it looks with this soft light setting so i will use that and then i will come to opacity and bring it down a little bit more just so it adds some nice texture but isn't too like overwhelming just like that we were able to create a pretty cool thumbnail maybe if i want to i can add a little bit of an outer glow to myself as well make it pop out a bit more right maybe we'll make it nice red uh, you can also play around with the blend modes here if you want to that can look cool sometimes 
and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with how this looks. So this is how you are able to create professional looking thumbnails pretty fast. Uh, you know, the main steps are first of all, have an image of you or a person with a face on it, cut out the background, uh, change the background to something you want to, if you want to, right? Uh, maybe apply some different blur or something like that to your background so it's less distracting. Have a nice font and a big text that is easy to read for your eye. Uh, feel free to add, you know, some extra elements and logos and stuff like that to, or, or even like icons to really just like make your thumbnail pop a little bit more. Make sure there is nice contrast between you, the text and the background so it's easy to read and don't use too many different colors because that can look very weird. I'm sure you have seen some thumbnails that look just a bit all over the place. So hope you guys found this video valuable. If you want to learn more from me and more step-by-step -step tutorials about how to use Photoshop, how to create you know amazing thumbnails and how to grow on YouTube and also how to edit kind of like that magnetic content, right? Like those videos that really just captivate you and get you millions and millions of views. Check out my masterclass in the description below, which is called Magnetic Editing, which will teach you everything I know about how to use Photoshop and Premiere Pro to create professional content. So hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.